Hello everybody, this is Dr. David Jockers, and today we're talking about 10 signs of a magnesium deficiency. And magnesium deficiencies are so common. In fact, really most people, 90% of our society have a magnesium deficiency, and really all of us, even health conscious people like myself, we can have a magnesium deficiency if we consume too many sugars or carbohydrates, or if we're under a lot of stress. You see, our body uses magnesium kind of like a, a car uses oil. It's constantly being used up for all cellular energy production, for allowing our body to adapt to stress, for sugar metabolism, for a number of different things. In fact, over 300 functions in the body depend on magnesium. And a neurosurgeon, PhD, uh, Dr. Norman Shealy, he truly believes that really all disease comes down to a magnesium deficiency at the cellular level. We're going to dive into that and really go over signs that you may have a magnesium deficiency in this presentation and the best strategies to overcome that naturally. So if you don't know me, my name is Dr. David Jockers. I am a doctor of natural medicine. I speak all around the world on a number of different health topics, including nutrient deficiencies and really how to improve your brain, your immune system, and your overall performance. And this is my beautiful wife, Angel, my little boys, David and Joshua. And so as we get into magnesium, we know that in general, magnesium is called the master mineral. And I was talking about how it's so important for blood sugar balance. But if you're magnesium deficient, you're going to have issues with blood sugar regulation, meaning that your blood sugar may jump up way higher than it should. And it will drop down and you'll end up with reactive hypoglycemia type reactions if, it, if you're magnesium deficient, deficient as well. Um, it's also really key for blood pressure. People ask me, what's one thing I can do to help stabilize my blood pressure from a supplement perspective? Obviously, a healing diet in general is going to be really key. But I would say take a magnesium supplement because it's so important for the proper tone of the endothelial lining, the, the smooth muscles in the blood vessels. And so if you're magnesium deficient, you're going to end up with rigid, non-elastic uh, endothelial lining, and you'll end up with higher pressure within your blood vessels. Um, it's also v key for cellular energy production. So within the mitochondria, we need magnesium. In fact, a lot of people struggle to be able to, in a sense, utilize ketones as an energy source well oftentimes because they're actually deficient in magnesium you need magnesium in order to run your mitochondria it helps calm and relax your nervous system so it helps reduce the bombardment of stress hormones in your brain and helps improve what we call your hpa your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis so you can function significantly better and really be able to react well to stress and adapt well to stress it helps with pain relief. And again, just like it works on the endothelial lining of the blood vessels, it also works to relax our skeletal muscles, really key for bone density and calcium balance. And I'm going to talk more about that as we go through. Really key for flexibility. You know, if you're really tight and rigid in your muscles, oftentimes a magnesium deficiency. And it will also help you sleep deep. People that are real light sleepers, oftentimes they're deficient in magnesium. So this is so important, such a critical topic for all of these reasons that I'm describing here. And because many top clinicians have, have basically said after you know years of working with people that all chronic disease is related to a magnesium deficiency at some level. So again, bodily functions, very important for calcium metabolism, really important for skeletal muscle, energy production, relaxing those smooth muscles in the blood vessels like we were talking about. Also really key for good bowel movement. You know, a lot of times people will become constipated when they are magnesium deficiency, deficient and really key for normal heart rhythm. So people have heart arrhythmias or tachycardia where the heart's racing at times or something like POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, oftentimes very deficient in magnesium. These things need to be addressed. And so we look at a normal healthy cell, we should have basically about a one-to-one -one ratio more or less of calcium and magnesium, okay? And so that really helps keep the cell healthy and strong. Most people in our society today are roughly between five to one to 15 to one ratio of calcium and magnesium. So they have significantly more calcium 
then they have magnesium. This is why I'm, I'm not a big fan of supplementing with calcium in general. I really focus on magnesium instead, as well as vitamin D for good calcium metabolism, and vitamin K2 is also very, very key for calcium met metabolism. And today, of course, we're talking about magnesium. So important. So we need roughly 1,000 milligrams daily of magnesium just to maintain basically our normal uh, cellular, produ cellular energy production, just to be able to, to adapt to stress and have normal life function. So 1,000 milligrams, really what we need. Now the RDA says 310 to 420 milligrams. That's what they're saying. 310 to 420 milligrams. So they're not even saying 1,000 milligrams, whereas you know, most functional health practitioners like myself, we believe, hey, we need a lot more than 310 to 420. And even at that level, that 310 to 420, 68% of our society does not consume that. 19% don't even consume half of it. So, so most people are very, very deficient in magnesium, just not getting a lot in. And of course, that's going to cause a number of different issues like what we're looking at here, poor cognitive processing. We're not going to be able to really think sharp and quickly when we have a magnesium deficiency. Oftentimes, we're much more prone to headaches and migraines, constipation. So when we have issues like IBS where it's kind of constipation and diarrhea can oftentimes be issues with magnesium, low energy in general, trouble sleeping at night, muscle spasms and cramping in the body. Chronic pain and fibromyalgia is a, is a big one. So um, anybody that's in chronic pain really should look at magnesium, trying to get more magnesium into their body. Heart arrhythmias, so people with heart arrhythmias always use magnesium. Numbness and tingling in the body, and then mood and behavioral disorders as well, ADHD, uh, bipolar, depression, anxiety, things like that, all related to magnesium deficiencies. So. Muscle tension, you know, this is probably one of the first symptoms many people experience is muscle tension. And I think all of us will experience that at times when we have stress. When we have stress, we start to notice that our muscles feel more tight or more fatigued, okay? And that is an early warning sign of magnesium deficiency because our, our basically our muscles are the lowest priority for our body. It'll take magnesium from the muscles because they can still operate, they can still in a sense, keep us alive, but it's going to try to shunt and triage magnesium to the brain, to the heart, things like that. So arrhythmias, brain issues, those are more later stage magnesium deficiency type problems. If you're out there and you start to notice muscle tightness, things like that when you're under stress, it's often a sign of dehydration as well as magnesium deficiency, so you want to address that. So how do you support good healthy magnesium levels, well, three major ways, magnesium rich foods, magnesium supplements, and also doing things like Epsom salt baths. Epsom salt is basically magnesium sulfate, and so it provides sulfates, which help with detoxification and magnesium into the body. So what are some of the best food sources of magnesium? Dark green leafy vegetables are a great source. Also doing grass-fed dairy, in particular, I like butter um, or ghee as a grass-fed dairy source, good source of magnesium. Avocados are a phenomenal plant-based magnesium source, also rich in potassium and antioxidants, kind of like the Swiss chard and the spinach there as well. Um, pumpkin seeds are a great source of magnesium. Getting good healthy salts like pink salts, Himalayan sea salt, Redmond's real salt, these are great sources. Um, consuming nuts, particularly soaked or sprouted nuts, is going to be the best way to get magnesium from nuts. Um, dark chocolate is a rich source of magnesium, and so is coffee. Sea vegetables, it's going to be things like kelp, dulce, um, nori, things like that, very rich sources of magnesium. Sprouts, one of my favorites, getting broccoli sprouts or kale sprouts, something along those lines, very rich in magnesium. And then from a Animal food perspective, wild-caught fish is a great source of magnesium. Wild-caught sockeye salmon, for example, really good source of magnesium. Now, I will tell you, it's hard to actually get enough magnesium from food. This is one of the few supplements that I'm a big fan of. And again, a couple ways you can supplement. If you are really on a tight budget or you just really need more magnesium, you have really tight muscles, you have fibromyalgia, you have a lot of the symptoms we're experiencing, we were, we were talking about, one of the most inexpensive things to do is take Epsom salt baths. Epsom salts are so cheap. 
you can get them at Walgreens or Walmart or you know any place like that, and 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 the, they're 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 just fine to get them like that. Now, you would want to avoid fragrances. Um, so if you were to get them at Walmart, for example, you don't want to get Epsom salt with fragrances from a place like that. If there's fragrances in there, you want to know that they're natural and organic. But if you were to just get Epsom salts and then maybe put some essential oils in your bathtub, that would be great. And um, basically what you want to do is roughly um, about a cup of Epsom salts per 100 pounds of body weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you're going to look at trying to get about two cups of Epsom salts in a tub of water. Um, and you know, if, if, for example, for some reason you're not able to get into a tub, you can even just start with your feet. A lot of, a lot of people will do that. They'll just start by soaking their feet in Epsom salts. But if you're able to get in the tub, that's the best way you're able to super soak your body and get that magnesium to cross transdermally from the water into the, the bloodstream, which works really, really good. Okay, you can also use magnesium oils, and we have a few magnesium oils, magnesium with MSM and magnesium with melatonin oil, uh, or the magnesium with melatonin is a, is a lotion that we have on drjockers.com that we'll use, and those are also transdermal delivery systems for magnesium. My favorite way to do, well, actually, before I jump into that, let me just finish by saying with Epsom salt baths, you know, if you are really dealing with a lot of the symptoms, I would recommend doing them every day. And I'll tell a lot of my patients to um, have an electronic curfew at nine o'clock where you come off electronics, you dim your lights in your home, you fill up your bath, okay, with the Epsom salts, you go in, you soak for 40 minutes. 20 minutes will help your body to detoxify and 20 minutes will help um, with absorption of the magnesium and the sulfate. So 40 minutes, you can listen to some light music, dim the lights, you can have essential oils diffusing, you can just relax, visualize, pray during that period of time, just be fully relaxed during that, that period of time. That's so good for your body. It's a great principle or practice to do every day if you're able to, or at least three times a week would be awesome. So outside of that, doing a magnesium supplement can be one of the best things for your body. In fact, this is our brain calm magnesium, which has a patented form of magnesium. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's called magnesium L3 and 8. And I'm so excited about this form of magnesium because research has shown that it helps support healthy brain magnesium levels, helps increase the amount of gaps, these synapses between the cells in our brain, which is extremely powerful for learning, for cognitive enhancement improves memory and cognitive acceleration, helps reduce stress, improves your sleep quality, and dramatically can improve your mood if you're dealing with a mood issue. And so research was done. They, um, they had individuals where they, they had people basically with Alzheimer's disease supplementing with magnesium L3 and 8, what's in this formulation here, for 17 months. And what they found was that they had a decrease in amyloid plaque, which is basically a buildup of um, damaged brain cells in the hippocampus, which is where we store our memory. And they had it, um, they, they reduced it by 35.8% in the hippocampus in 17 months, just using magnesium L3 and A. That's not even talking about diet changes and things like that. 36% reduction in the frontal cortex, which helps us with cognitive processing and uh, the ability to think sharply and quickly. So really, really, really powerful stuff coming out in uh, the research world with magnesium L3 and 8. We have that in our brain called magnesium. That's why I'm so excited about that supplement. And you can find that on drjockers.com on our website. And um, so be, be sure to go ahead and check that out. That is our Brain Calm Magnesium. And on our store, we have free shipping on all orders over $49. So um, go ahead and take advantage of the free shipping. Get this product. I guarantee you're going to love it. Um, you know, If you don't, ask for your money back, and I would be happy to, to give you a refund. So anyways, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed today's training, and we'll be back for a future training. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.